In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to overclock, use the USB drive, and install Sega CD on your Sega Genesis Mini System with HackGee CE 3.7. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so before we actually get started, there is something that I wanted to make note of. Now this is not something I knew before I put out my tutorial, but it appears that there is some sort of a residual file that is left on the console when you're trying to uninstall HackGee that will prevent you from installing Project Lunar. Now there is a solution and a workaround and a correction for this, and I'm gonna be putting out a second video tomorrow showing you guys how to do that if you want to go back to Project Lunar. So I'm gonna have a dedicated video specifically how to uninstall HackGee so that way your console's prepped for either hack. So I'll get that out as quickly as I can, but for this video, we're just gonna focus on some of the features for HackGee. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys how to do is get the overclocking done on it so that way it's running at the 1.334 gigahertz rather than the 1.0, which is stock on the CPU. It's really simple to do this. What you're gonna to need to do is make sure that your Genesis Mini is connected to your computer and it is turned on. The way you'll know that is when you've got HackGee CEO up and running, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, we've got a green light. It says we're online and we're good to go. So we're just gonna jump into it. We're gonna to go to the modules section and we're gonna to go to the KMFD mods hub. Then we're gonna navigate over to the KMFD retro arc and you're gonna see there's something called extreme overclock. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we are going to go ahead and do the download and install the module just to get it up and running on the console so we're all done. We're gonna hit download and install. It's gonna download it and it's gonna completely flash your console. It's gonna install the module and it's gonna do everything for you. So as you can see here, it says that the mini is rebooting. We're just gonna wait for that process to finish. Excellent, so now you see that uh, the little prompts on screen are gone and it just took a few extra seconds but we are back online and that's it. That's all you need to do to get the system overclocked. It's really, really quite simple. So we can go ahead and close out of this. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to load Sega CD games onto here. And then after that, I'll show you how to export to a USB. Uh, just because then we can go ahead and export our files to the USB and we're good to go. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to get our BIOS files. So this is gonna be important for pretty much any CD-based console that you want to load onto your Genesis Mini. So if you're looking for PlayStation 1, uh, Dreamcast, or Sega CD, or any of those sort of things, you need the BIOS files loaded up. And for legal reasons, they're not included with HackGee with the cores, and I cannot tell you where to get them. You'll have to find them on your own. First thing that we need to do to get them loaded up is really simple. We are gonna go to Tools. We're gonna go to Open FTP Client. So we're gonna get our dialog box that opens up. We're gonna hit ETC. Then we're gonna go into the libretro and we're going to go into our systems folder here. So this is gonna be where we're going to install all of our BIOS files. Now, depending on the console, you may have to create a folder and label it something specific, but for Sega CD, we don't actually have to do that. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. And as you can see, I've got three different BIOS files and we've got a BIOS underscore CD underscore E, we've got BIOS underscore CD underscore U and a BIOS underscore CD underscore J. And those are gonna be for the three different regions. You've got your US, we've got your EU, and we've got your Japan region. All we need to do is grab them and dump them into this folder, and that's it. Now we've got our BIOS loaded up, we can go ahead and close this. The next thing that we have to do is just add our games. And there's gonna be a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. So when I go over to modules and I go to our install extra modules, uh, you're gonna see all of the different cores that I previously installed. The two that we want to use is Genesis Plus GX, and Pico Drive. Pico Drive is great for Sega CD because it can run multi-disc games, whereas Genesis Plus GX cannot run multi-disc games, but it can run CHD files. So it depends on the type of file that you have. Most of my files are bin Q, so I can actually use Pico Drive for pretty much everything, uh, but I do have a few CHD files which I'm gonna load up and I'll run them through Genesis Plus GX as well. So. If you don't already have these cores, you're obviously gonna have to download them and you do that the same way that you would download any of the other cores that you previously downloaded. We're gonna go ahead and back on out over here. We're gonna add a game. 
and I just need to navigate to my Sega CD folder. Excellent, so I've got them right here. So as you guys can see, I have some CHD files and then inside some of these folders, I have my bin queue. And I'm actually gonna do the Batman Returns game because as you can see, it has a tremendous amount of bin files. So I wanted to show you what that looks like in the event that you run into a game like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our queue file from here. And it's gonna process that information and load it up into Hackchi. And we're going to get a dialog box that comes up that asks us to select which console and core we want to use. So we're going to click on the game. We're going to scroll down and find our Sega CD, which is right over here. And then we have to select our drive. Because this has been Q, it will work with both Pico Drive and with Genesis Plus GX. But because this is a single disc game, I'm just going to go ahead and select the Genesis Plus GX core. I'm going to hit apply and I'm gonna go ahead and close that. So now that game has been added in here. So now that it's loaded up on here, what we're gonna to need to do is get the correct artwork. If you right click on it and just download the box art for it, you will end up with the wrong artwork. So we need to go over to the artwork section. So what you may find is when you click on Google, you're not actually gonna find the artwork that you want. So you may have to source it yourself. Now I've already done that. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna hit browse and I'm just gonna grab it. It should be sitting right on my desktop and it's right over here. So I'm gonna grab that file, it's gonna pull it in and we're gonna be good to go that way. So we've got that loaded up, we're gonna right click on it and I'm gonna to go to show in Windows Explorer. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna show you guys that it did actually pull the bin files along with the Q file. So when we actually take a look at everything in here, you can see that we've got all the bin files included with the Q file here. So we'll go ahead and close that out. So that's really nice and handy. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a multi-disc game that's gonna be in bin queue as well. So we're gonna add more games. We're gonna go back to our directory with our games in it. And for this, we're gonna use Night Traps. So for the first thing that we're gonna do is you can see I've got a disc one of two and I've got a disc two of two. I'm gonna double click on disc one. And as you can see here, I've got a Q file and I've actually got the game file. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and grab our Q file. But before we do that, we just need to make sure that it's pointing to the correct file. And the easiest way to do that is to right click on it. We're gonna open this with Notepad++. And what we want to check to make sure is the name right over here is equivalent to this name. And as you can see, it does match 100%. So we are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. We're gonna grab our Q file. It's going to process and load right up into Hackchi. It's gonna give us the same options as before. We're gonna click on the game. We're gonna select, it's a Sega CD game. And then we have to select Pico Drive. Then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. Then we're gonna close that and it's gonna load it up. So now we've loaded up the first disc for Night Trap. What we need to do is we need to add the second disc as well. To do that, we just have to right click. We've got a show in Windows Explorer. It's now gonna pull up the folder that it created for this game. And we simply just have to add the other queue and the other bin file into this folder. So I've actually got those right over here and I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag them into this folder. It'll take about a second or so to transfer, but that's it. So now we actually have both disks within the proper folder and it's gonna run on the proper emulator core. We can go ahead and close that and we can go back on over to our main directory for Hackchi. And the last thing I'm gonna show you guys how to do is load up a CHD file. And the reason you're gonna to wanna to do that is because CHD tends to be much more compressed than your bin queue. So if you're concerned about space, you're gonna to wanna to try to find CHD files assuming the games are not multi-disc games. So same process, we're gonna add a game, we're gonna to go to our Sega CD section, and we are gonna select a title. I'm gonna go ahead and select Earthworm Jim, the special edition CHD. It's gonna process it and dump it in there. We do the same process, we select Sega CD. In this case, I'm going to run CHD on Genesis Plus GX, and we're gonna hit apply, and we're gonna hit close. The only thing that's left for us to do is to scrape the artwork, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly. And now we've got our three games loaded up with the proper artwork and assigned to the correct core with the BIOS in the right area. 
All that's really left for us to do is transfer this to our Genesis mini console, but because these files are so big, there's no way we could do it with the internal memory. So we want to load them up onto our USB stick. Now this process is gonna be the same for any other consoles that you want to load. I actually recommend loading everything onto a USB drive. I think it tends to be the smarter way to go. Additionally, you can use an OTG adapter, which is actually really handy. I like to use the Octopus style OTG, which I've got on the screen. I use it for all of my builds and it's something that I recommend and I leave links to those in the description down below as well. The nice thing about these is that you've got additional spaces so you can put in a Wi-Fi dongle if you want to connect to the internet or if you've got a Bluetooth adapter or any of those sort of things, it can all be done with this OTG adapter. So again, what we need to do is we need to have our USB drive plugged in. It should be formatted in either FAT32 or NTFS. And then all you have to do is hit the export to USB button. It's gonna pop up another dialog and it's gonna say, hey, which USB drive do you wanna export it to? And be sure you are selecting the correct USB drive. I know mine is an eight gig USB drive and it is the only one connected, so I'm okay this way. But if you have multiple USB drives, you're gonna need to know what drive letter your USB is connected to. I've already selected the correct one. I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna say new games are moved to an unsorted folder. We're gonna hit okay and it's gonna say, hey, we've got all of your previous folders on your USB drive, but we have this over here, which is unsorted. These are the new games we've added. What we need to do is we need to create a new folder. So if we split these and sort them by console, it'll automatically dump them into a Sega CD folder. That's great, we just can grab that and we can pull it out to our main directory and we can actually go ahead and delete this unsorted folder. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we've assigned the proper artwork to this folder. So we're gonna select on the menu icon and we're just gonna scroll down and we're gonna look for Sega CD. So we've got it right here. We're gonna hit okay. And as you can see, all of my folders have the appropriate artwork and they look really nice and sharp. That's all that we need to do. We can hit okay. And it's going to go ahead and process those games and send them off to the USB drive. I'm just gonna quickly fast forward through this process. All right, so that is done now. Now I do wanna make the recommendation, if you can at all, use a USB 3.0. And the reason you wanna do that is because using a USB 2.0 takes a very, very long time to export. So that's just a little bit of a pointer, but we are good to go. We've got our games loaded up onto our USB drive. All that's really left for us to do is to take that USB and either plug it into an OTG adapter into our console, or you can pop it right into the player two port on the front of the console as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna switch over to the Sega Genesis mini. All right, so here we are on the Genesis Mini, and as you can see, I've got my main screen with all my different folders. And funny enough, I don't have any Genesis games on here right now, so uh, I'll probably have to fix that, but not in this video. Uh, we're gonna jump right on over to Sega CD. We're gonna hit A, and as you can see, we've got our three titles, uh, Batman Returns, Earthworm Jim, and Night Trap. And what I'm going to do is just load up Earthworm Jim and show you guys that it is functioning properly. So the first thing that we're gonna notice is we do get the main Sega boot screen come up and if I do hit the select and start button at the same time, or if you set it to hold your start button for two seconds, we're gonna get into our RetroArch menu. So you can see we are within RetroArch and it is running properly that way. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it started and I'm just gonna jump into some gameplay so you guys can see that the audio and the gameplay is running really well. And there you have it folks. Now we've got Sega CD up and running. We've got an overclock Sega Genesis and I did show you guys how to use the USB feature for HackG CE 3.7. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any other questions. But other than that, that's all I've got for you. Thanks so very much for watching the video and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.